Welcoming to the hot corner. Hope you all doing all right out there. That's uh, let's go, but let's not. Come on, we gotta do. We gotta come up with something better than that. What? I hope you're doing all right hey, out there. I said out there, so give me a little credit there. We uh, credit there. You know, I'm working on it, Joe. It's gotta come naturally. Move it back to Wednesday. This doesn't That's work. That's it. We're out of here. We're done. This We're Tuesday thing. What is it? Th this is the third episode. Doesn't work out. Sorry. Well, it, it's like, uh, is nobody going to listen on Tuesday or is nobody going to listen on Wednesday? Oh, dude. Like, the, make your choice. The podcast numbers are through the roof. Through the roof. Oh, yeah? Insane. Do we take over Dirt and Sprague in the morning? I check the analytics, all right? I check the numbers. I check the data. We got huge numbers last week. Don't ask what the number was exactly. It's so huge. The biggest numbers. I mean, the biggest uh, numbers everybody says that uh, they've never seen numbers this big before. They were like, wow, Gettysburg, wow. Oh, wow, Gettysburg, what a crazy event. I wow, can't believe just that a, a beautiful war, really. Good guys, bad guys on both sides. God, maybe you should have put that one in the open. Like, baseball's amazing, something related to that. I don't know. Just God. do our Papa T impressions as best we can. <laughs> I've, ne I've never heard of her. I've ne I have never paid her a dime. I always called him Papa T. I thought that was worthy. Sounds creepy. So <sighs> pop a tea. Anyways. How what you do doing, I, dude? What do I do with my hands? I don't know, but it's about this big. H how's your how's your Tuesday? <clears throat> my Tuesday? Yeah. Well, today's my Friday. Well, happy Friday, oh, Tuesday. Um, yeah. Today is my Friday, so that's awesome. That's good. That's good. But what I've learned Lucky about you. what I've <laughs> learned it's a Tuesday, quite <laughs> frankly, the worst day in a Monday through Friday work week. So I'm happy for you. Um, Tuesday is my Friday. And what's funny as a younger whippersnapper, uh, Tuesday, uh, when you have days off, like Wednesday, Thursday, when you you know work in the industry that I work in and you've got your random days off or in the middle of the week, those are like, oh, those are the party days, baby, let's roll. You know, Tuesday night, I'd be going out. Wednesday, I'm hitting up some industry friends. Thursday, we're doing that. We're figuring out till Friday, we'll get used. Well, now I'm married with kids. So my Wednesday, Thursday is so like- So turn it up a few levels. Yeah, so Wednesday, Thursday, we get real wild at the Harris household on Wednesday, Thursday. We uh, work on the lawn, clean the car, go to the gym and i basically uh stay home all day and 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 do nothing and try not to start drinking at one o'clock now that's a tough uh tough uh task right well there. you know when you pick up the kids from school and you're in the parking lot and you're like hey what up kids i love to see you this is great like, they don't they don't really enjoy that Really? Yes. The, the schools are not fond of... They're not uh, fond of drunk Patrick drunk in the parking parent lot. showing up in the pickup line. Yeah, and I'm like the bonus parent, too. So it's like, they're like, you're on the list, but who are you? This is getting close to the line, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I got to wait on Wednesday, Thursdays to start drinking until at least 3 o'clock. Uh, well, they do say on t uh, Tuesdays, or a rapper said, I got the club going up on a Tuesday. That was a that was a hit single at some point. Welcome into the hot corner. The club is lit tonight. <laughs> is that what you lit. said? What'd you say? Got the club going up. Got the welcome into the on hot a, corner. Got the club going up on a Tuesday. It's about his got your girl in the cut and she choosy or something yeah, like that. I, I don't know. As lame as rocking you on a Friday. I don't. I don't know what I'm gonna do. For the we'll intro, figure it out. I've been rock. I've been racking my brain. I've been trying to figure it out. You'll I don't want to push out. anything. I just, I want it to be just natural. Let it flow naturally. All right. Because don't it, don't force it like a Tinder relationship. It 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 must be, kind of just happened one day and then it just went on a, for a, a decade. A meet cute, a meet cute of a new uh, Tuesday slogan. Of yeah, some sort. yeah, yeah. So we gotta figure that out. Well, I appreciate you bringing beers, as always. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I never started a relationship on Tinder. I heard I heard the guys talking about it. Relationship on Twitter for me. I mean, I definitely. I, I de or sorry, Tinder. Uh, I had some fun. That's Tinder, for sure. Yeah. See, that's kind of the but route never, that I'm leaning on that too. A like, relationship never formed. Everything was always organic. 
I found my disasters organically. Tinder, what is I it? Didn't, I didn't Bumble need... and Hinge. Yeah, Bumble, I was big. I liked Bumble a lot. Because the chick had to message you. But I uh, all oh, my yeah. all my disaster relationships before my wife happened organically. So I do want to be excited about that because uh, I feel like Tinder disasters would be worse than natural disasters. Yeah, my. Uh, I mean, it's like, been... do you want do you want nuclear warfare where people can drop bombs, or are you more down with like tsunamis and hurricanes? I think I'm more down with tsunamis and hurricanes. Yeah, it's been uh, well documented that uh, Souk was uh, my cupid, and uh, that's he, true. He struck an arrow, got a little lucky. Struck an arrow, and uh, either I don't know if I guess it would be my my cheek and my significant other's cheek. Yeah. And, um, yeah, things things are going great. I would also like to throw a shout-out to Ryan Buckley, the producer of Primetime, for sitting in this chair and dropping it a lot lower. My feet can touch the ground. <laughs> You're not is, swinging your feet around which is funny because, like a child. Which is funny because Buck is easily six, seven inches taller than me. And old Isachi over there, he, uh, he, him and I are not too far off. He's a touch taller than I am. But he likes this chair way high up. And Dusty must as well, who is not much taller than I am. Uh, but old Buckley has decided to drop this chair down. And boy, let me tell you what, this feels amazing. You, uh, I can touch the ground. Well, I was gonna say, Toes on I'm the just floor. not the kid with his like legs just swinging. You know, yeah. yeah. Like, I think Kevin Daddy, Hart's got. A, I want some pizza. Yeah, Kevin Hart's got a bit like that where it's like you can't really look cool or hard sitting in a uh, stool where your feet don't touch the ground and you're swinging them like a child. Yeah, that, that's why I sit at the bar. Like if, if I sit at the bar because it's close enough that people can't really see your legs. But if you're like at a high top in the bar, but not at the bar. You're just swinging, and people are like, "Oh, that short king is not very kingly." That's it's why those like, bars are clutch with like the foot stools yeah, or the foot wells, yeah. where you can just actually sit at a bar, but not hangy little legs like my short stubs would. So you're like nice. Lord Farquaad in yeah, Shrek, basically. <laughs> yes, yeah, basically. But I look like Shrek, so it's like this weird conundrum oh, to be come in. On. And you, by the, you more like Princess Fiona. By the way, guys, trust me. Wait, what? He's Princess Fiona? Yeah. No. Looks Princess much Fiona, she, yeah, she's a babe. Well, she's hot. Well, yeah, if that's what you want. Then she doesn't it. have a mustache, but okay. What, what, were you gonna, what were you going to admit there? Oh, you, I was going to say Trust Tree. My wife and I met on OkCupid, and we... Oh, oh, oh old days. Wow. We lied. Oh, plenty of fish? Yeah, yeah, way before Plenty of Fish. OkCupid, we lied to our families for at least four years um, before coming clean and saying, okay, we'd met online. Because it wasn't cool at that time. Now, everybody's doing it, but it was like, hey, you're going to meet a murderer. You're going to meet a killer. Plenty Don't do of that. fish. Uh, I no, think, okay, Cupid. I, oh, I know, plenty just of plenty of fish. That's the one I haven't heard in. I while. think my favorite story is I Still was uh, I was on a Tinder date up in. Uh, we went to Victoria Bar on Ooh. Albina it's in good, North Portland. It's a good Great spot. place. Love the. Is Island that the patio. place that has all their names uh, drinks named after uh, Princess Bride? I'm not sure about I'm that. Have to, it's like they're all their drinks are named after a quote or a line from that movie. I'm not sure about that, but I love that spot. It was a it's a great Tinder spot. So shout out to any of you. I think I actually went to gents a... or ladies or they's. I most to definitely this went on a Tinder date. Stupid <laughs> program about baseball where we don't talk about baseball. Uh, I missed a solid UFC uh, fight for that. Uh, uh, Victoria is a pissed. great date bar. And I'm there with this Tinder date. It's our first date. And I'm sitting there and I'm talking to this lady. And she, uh, I was really blown away because she sounds like me. So I was like, hi, it's nice to meet you. She was like, hi, it's nice to meet you too. <laughs> Sexy. I was like, oh, all right, here we go. I think that was a dude. Here we go. No, that's like Marge Simpson is a man. Uh, and she gets up at one point to use the restroom. So I'm sitting there and I'm kind of looking around. And I look next to me and I go, whoa. And there is my boss. She is also on a Tinder date, and he was in the restroom. <laughs> so I'm looking at him like, yo, what's up? What are you doing here? And she goes, actually, I'm I'm on a Tinder date. And I went, no S, so am I. And so we laughed about that, and we had a good chuckle, and then my date comes back and sits down, and she's like, oh, you guys know each other. And we're like, actually, we're, we're, we work together. And and my Tinder date says, oh, that's so cool. Like, um. I mean, just just to be safe, like this guy's not gonna kill me, is is he? Like she kind of makes the joke, and my boss is like, "No, Patrick's great. Like you're gonna have a wonderful time. He's a great guy." And so I'm kind of like laughing, thinking, you know, she's playing up to the stereotype. 
She asks her three more times if I'm going to kill her. If I'm a serial killer, that's going to, like, tie her up and put her out back. And it's like, this joke is no longer funny. Hey, man, that happens. That date didn't go well. That happens. Well, it depends on what you... Quantify as well because One the end of the night, <laughs> you dog. The end of the night finished. <laughs> you hit it and quit it. Hey, such hey. a dog. I'm sorry, but oh, I'm not. Oakley, Oakley. Well, we got a baseball show for you tonight. I got a question. You know, well, first of all, you know where you should have found uh, your girlfriend. You don't have to be lonely at farmersonly.com. That's true. That's true. I should have just trolled and been like, you know, I love Brooks and Dunn and. Getting on my horse Dude, and do not don't get me on uh, singing country music again. It's it's right? it's it's like that uh, that article you read that says you know women who ride horses live longer and I always say yeah because women who ride horses have health insurance because horses are not cheap. No, and you will always be second fiddle to the horse if you date a horse. Girl. That's the truth. That oh. Victoria Bar, by the way, yes, all their drinks are named after uh, things from uh, Princess Bride. They got the Inigo Montoya. They got the Miracle Max. My name uh, is Inigo Montoya. They you got the, my father. Prepare to die. You can get the inconceivable. Love it. Yeah. So there, there's some fun stuff for you. Oakley Doakley. Well, we do have a baseball show for you tonight. We got a lot to get to. Is this AL Central team any good? Despite having the second best record in baseball, I'm probably going to have to eat crow on the best record in the American League, which is a little difficult, but we might not talk about that. Uh, I'd like to check in. Is the greatest player ever still continuing to become the greatest player ever again? So we'll check in on that. But we'll start here. The drama is over. And is it kind of weird that it's just over that quickly? Have you ever heard of a man named Shohei? We'll start there. This is the Hot Corner, Portland Sports Leader, 1080 The Fan.
Bridge, right down the road there is the uh, poop-filled Willametta. Still poop filled, back huh? to the old days. Yeah, and I haven't, think it haven't is cleaned still. it up yet. I don't think so. Still I, a bunch of lime scooters at the bottom. Doesn't look I, good. I don't think so. It's like lime scooters and bicycles that homeless people stole and were like, ah, eh, this one's not very good. Wait Throw they, it off the bridge. Wait till they pull a 77 Chevette out of there with like a body in it that's just been sitting there for decades. 30 years. Yeah. yeah. It was like a brand new car and the guy got hot on the on the on the bridge and drove it over and nobody noticed. Uh, welcome in. Uh, there is the YouTube stream for us. That's at 1080 AM, the fan on YouTube. There's also the Vancouver Ford text line. All texts to the van are via the Vancouver Ford text line. Your dollar goes further at Vancouver Ford. They treat you right before, during, and after the sale. Visit VancouverFord.com, 503-864-6326. Got mine in the parking lot. There's a lot to get to this hour. There's a lot to get to next hour. We'll have the, uh, everybody's favorite, Fair or Foul, at the bottom of the 8 o'clock hour. We'll touch in on a little bit. Uh, the worst team in the American League West is not the Seattle Mariners. We'll get to that as well. But the best team in the American League Central might surprise you. And could they be the best team in the American League? So we got a lot to get to, but we want to start here. Uh, this Ipe Shohei drama seems to have come to an end. Well, not for Ipe. He's got a lot going on, but... It's all just a big misunderstanding. <clears throat> Let, let's put some tinfoil... gambling. Let's put some tinfoil hats on real quick. I want to have a little bit of fun with this. So Shohei seems to be exonerated from the whole thing. There's been quotes come out from teammates saying, we knew from the beginning that Ipe was a shady character and that Shohei was legit. But he went to UC Riverside. (laughs) But Shohei was legit and did nothing wrong. Can we put our tinfoil hats on for a minute and ask the question, is this finally baseball doing something to protect baseball? Uh... You like mean, let's like, let's protect our superstar and make sure even if he did have any knowledge or dealings with this, let's make sure he is clean and oh, wow. sparkly. Hmm. Uh, that's what I'm asking, dude. I'm here for conspiracies, man. Because that's what we need in 2024. That's what, more conspiracies. What we need in baseball too. Uh, I mean, do you want me to keep like pushing this or do you want me to give you an honest answer well i want you to push it first <laughs> and then when everybody yes when every, then when everybody turns the station off he because they fall, think you're stupid he's a then fall you guy can bring the reality and uh it was shohei actually placing these bets shohei I'm, big big southampton guy i'm trying to find the quote from Ipe. also thought ten hag was going to really revive united I, I want to find this. Maybe he's a Pochettino guy at Chelsea. Maybe what? he really likes Chelsea. Okay, now we're losing people. Maybe he really thought Barcelona was going to be PSG today. Who? Paris Saint-Germain. Got it. Uh, I'm trying to find Paris the Saint-Germain. Because. Famous, <laughs> playing Barcelona. Man, that was a real Swigard enunciation there, huh? By the way, I saw Swigard at work on Saturday after the Timbers game. Oh, toasty. I, I saw Swigard at the Timbers game. Swigard was toasty. And I think he big timed me at the at the Timbers game. Oh, you got big timed by Swag? Yeah, I can't believe it. I iced him. <laughs> he was walking. If it makes you feel any better, at my job, we uh make an uh, a competitive version of Smirnoff Ice. Yes! And I definitely dropped one on the table and made him drink it. It's over. Here's the situation. I think. <laughs> we think. Iced. So Ipe Mizuhara at one point, they yeah. uh, found like text messages of uh, him to the bookie. Did you see this? Yeah. He's like, Shohei doesn't know. Don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I won't tell the most famous athlete on the planet right now. You got it. I'll just keep that inside. Well, hey, that's that stops the gravy train. So of course he would, at least at the time for for the start of the story. Because when it gets to him, maybe trying to track Shohei down physically, it kind of gets a little hairy. The bookie, anyways. But let's but let's ask this question: Do you think that if Shohei had some some involvement with this, just like a un peu, as the French say, just a little bit? Do you think baseball would try and bury this? Mm, no. 
You think they'd blow him up? Like, because nobody hates baseball more than baseball, as I always say. They're like, we have the best player, the most marketable star since Willie Mays. Let's tear him down. Well, I mean, would be the most baseball thing ever, right? Yeah, but also, like, if he actually did have involvement, like, we're, this is like, f- we're getting into, like, a federal crime aspect of it. And the FBI is on board. Yeah, so, now, granted, I might be stupid. The FBI might be on board because of the fact that he stole millions of dollars. Like, if it was the illegal bookmaker aspect, I don't know if they'd be in on it. But, yeah, um, dude, this is one text message that was going around. From the criminal complaint, on March 20th, 2024, Mizuharo sent Bookmaker One an encrypted text message admitting that he had stolen uh, funds from victim A. Otani is victim A. Mizuharo messaged Bookmaker One stating, have you seen the reports? Bookmaker One responded, yes, but that's all BS. Obviously, you didn't steal from him. I understand it's a cover job. Mizuharo then responded, technically, I did steal from him. It's all over for me. <laughs> yeah. See the Actually, <laughs> dude, they got me, dude. I'm so hosed. Yeah. By the no. way, can I put 20 bucks on this Liverpool United game? <laughs> hey, give me, give me a little bit more credit, please. Just one win back. And then Otani, who was looking over his shoulder, said, now text him and say the money was stolen. <gasps> <gasps> Dun. God. Uh, there was another one. I, I, I believe there was another one where he texted the bookmaker and said, man, I'm really bad at this gambling stuff. I, <laughs> am I? That sounds like if you want a tinfoil hat, does that not sound like Shohei's like, hey, you should tell him you suck at gambling. <laughs> Let, all right. Let's lean into this tinfoil hat. You know what I mean? Bit. You're right. It, that. That is the perfect cover story. And let me just say. It's great. Let, if his bond is 250 k and Shohei's like, can I give this to a buddy to go <laughs> bail him out so it doesn't come to me? Let me just say that that fans really should understand that sports leagues like the NFL, like what, what, is that, what is that moniker? Protect the shield. They will do absolutely anything. And I understand you're right. Baseball just continues to kill themselves. Nobody seems to hate baseball more than baseball when it comes to these situations. However. That's going to be on my tombstone. <laughs> it's like it's a very very good saying, and you're right. However, the Houston Astros come to mind. The sign stealing scandal, right? Right. You know, they mm. they were kind of the fall guys for the entire league at the time because we heard from other reporters. You can go find many different writings online that allegedly other teams were stealing signs. Mike I, Fires got blackballed for calling them out, and he was on the team. Exactly, <laughs> and and I and you still hear. I have sources today. Telling me, like now, this year, there are still allegedly sign stealing operations going on. Of course, it's a lot harder to do <gasps> with electronic signs now, but there are there are all kinds of ways that teams are still trying to get an edge, and MLB would never do anything to Right, but the that. thing with so that is because, do anything the thing is with this. that though is the reason MLB didn't come down on Houston is because they didn't want to fight the union. Is they knew the union would come guns blazing. You want to suspend any of these players. We're going to come guns blazing. Like, but we want also, to see your proof. So they made the GM and the coach and find find the, the organization. They knew they could get, make those fall guys. This In this situation... It was also to stop the leaks in the proverbial MLB boat. Though. In this situation, it's one person. If Shohei is gambling, like, look what's going on in the NBA. Look what's going on in the NFL. Like, we got guys gambling, and they're getting busted left and right. You can do that, and the Players Association is like, Whoa, that was one guy. Sorry, we're cool. But when it's a whole team and a bunch of dudes, they're like, oh, that might be too many players. Yeah, Jonte Porter. Uh, yeah. At least current Raptor right now. We'll see. Can I read you some more texts? Yeah, baby. Let's go. Uh, apparently in June of last year, Mizahara message, I got my ass kicked again, LOL. <laughs> Any chance I can get one last bump? This will be my last one for a while if I lose it. <laughs> last what, bump. What, what, what bump? Like, you doing blow or are we just talking about money here? Yeah, hey, gambling's like a drug, they <laughs> no, say. No, like a fifty dollars to $100,000 credit yeah, bump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah book Maker one, he said, okay, bud, I just want to be able to communicate with my partner so he uh, knows expectations. If I can assure him that minimum 500 will be sent every week, I can do the bump to whatever you want. It's just imperative that the 500 is sent every week. As you can imagine, the figures are very high and just don't want to not be able to deliver what I tell him. FYI, I've already paid out of my pocket to him half of the balance that is on the account. So whatever is lost every week, I have to give him half of the balance. That's why I'm asking these direct, important questions. And that 500 is not 500 bucks. 
Why don't you you put a couple zeros after that? The next text message literally came the next day. The next day for Mizahara. I'm the worst, LOL. Can't catch a break. Can I get one last bump? I swear this is going to be my last until I get the balance down significantly. I promise this will be the last bump for a while. Bookmaker One responded the same day saying, okay, NP. Did Done. y'all see the totals of the money that? E- 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 sorry, what, what's his name? One more time. Ipe. Ipe Mizuhara, right? Yeah, I was yeah. about to say Izuhara, and I'm like, I think I know Ipe that's wrong. is fine. We call him Shohei. We no, can so, call him Ipe. So the yeah, the Ipe numbers <laughs> uh, apparently. Yoshi, you apparently, know, we're we're one name when it comes to the Japanese guys. Apparently, he won something in the realm of 120, 130 million dollars, and lost somewhere in the realm of 170 plus million dollars. That's insane. This dude placed thousands upon thousands of bets from 2021 to 2024, apparently to the tune of 300 plus grand per day. I mean, if I need 500k. Up front. I, I would like to give a shout out on the Vancouver Ford text line from our, our, our good friend Deal. Did he send a you up text? Basically. <laughs> Was good. Hey, he, you up. Uh, then sent another Speaking text. Speaking of Tinder, I've definitely sent you up texts. <laughs> he sent a, 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 a third text on a third consecutive day saying, I have a problem, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> LOL. Yeah, I can yeah. tell. Yeah, no um, ass, brother. <laughs> and then he asks, can I get one last, last, last bump? <laughs> this one is for real. Last one for real. And the bookmaker responded, done, check mark emoji, fist bump emoji. I have the same problem, <laughs> laughing emoji. <laughs> Jesus. To be honest with you, Ipe, as long as you can guarantee the 500 every Monday, I'll give you as much as you want because I know you're good for it. Again, <laughs> Yeah, he knows he is good for it yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, again, I just had to clean it up with my partner, and that's one reason why I was asking before. Well, we'll keep an eye on Ipe <laughs> and see what happens to him. But it seems that Shohei has been as absolved. Yeah, of this, I don't think Ipe is good baseball. for it anymore. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Shohei Otani and the Dodgers, <laughs> something happened for the first time in almost six years on Sunday. And is this the true repercussions? And can this continue and help build the sport that we all love? This is the hot corner. But first, there's Jordan with sports. Now, now, from the Fan Sports Desk, a Sports Center update on 1080 The Fan. First on the fan, the NBA play-in round happening as we speak. Already finished up the Lakers beating the Pelicans 110 to 106, despite Zion Williamson going off for 40 points. LeBron James leading the way for LA with 23. D'Angelo Russell adding 21 points. The Lakers moving on to face the Nuggets in the first round of the official NBA playoffs. Right now you got the Kings taking on the Golden State Warriors. It's uh Pretty decent battle, I would say, with about five minutes to go in the first quarter. The Kings do lead Golden State 20-12. to Keegan Murray going off so far for Sacramento with 11 points. Elsewhere in the association, the Bucks planning to be without two-time MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo for at least the start of their playoff series with the Pacers because of a strained calf. The team hopeful that Giannis could be back by the end of the first round. And in baseball, the Seattle Mariners trying for back-to-back wins against the Cincinnati Reds up at T-Mobile Park right now. Logan Gilbert been pitching uh, pretty well so far through three innings. Only one hit allowed, five strikeouts, but going to the top of the fourth, it is still scoreless up at T-Mobile. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. I'm Schulte at the 1080 The Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand on the Odyssey app. The fan's desktop player, or tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. Tired of getting dinged by subscriptions? We won't send you a bill. Portland's sports leader, 1080 The Fan. Time is money. At Lace Auto Collision Centers, we take...
on a team like uh, we had our first game. Uh, now my kid is seven. <laughs> okay. uh, medium Joe is what twelve. Uh, 11. Just, 11. Just turned 11. My kid is seven, so it's still like four kids, eight kids swarming around a ball. Mm. Uh, I think we lost on Saturday 4 0. 4 0. Hey, that's a, that's a four solid nil. matchup. That's a solid matchup. 4 nil. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's... Yeah. We're lo- lo- I think it's 13 <laughs> 0, and I just got the message from his mother feel bad for the other team. I don't. Well, no. no. We're trying no. to get a dub out here, If, if right? you're out there, you're yelling at, uh, oh, Mr. Marsh? <laughs> what kind of name is Mr. Marsh? What I you, am the ultimate bad dad. What do you want to do? Huh? What do you want to do? Hey, you up? Dude, let's go Vipers, okay? Mercy rules suck. I, I hate mercy rules. They never, in, in the world of kids' sports, mercy mercy rules shouldn't exist. Right, because we, we should teach them to lose even worse. <laughs> like if you, Oh, if you, you think this is rock bottom? Let me teach you rock bottom. Hey, sometimes in life, you really take it on the face, and it just comes at you day after day after day. Listen, at least- Mark, <laughs> I want that pulled. Yeah, that means- I want happen, that yeah. pulled right now. Do your job and pull that. Listen, in this game of baseball <clears throat> that we also oh love, I think a mercy rule probably is needed because if there isn't one, there like a team could just literally just bludgeon the hell out of the other team all night until the sun goes down. Dude, you gotta like, learn, man. The ten the ten run rule. There's a timed game. Uh, uh, soccer is a time game. So Soccer's I, a timed so game. So at least it ends. I mean, if baseball doesn't have a mercy rule, no baseball, I'm okay. But soccer's a timed game. Yeah, hockey is a timed game. Yeah, sorry. There's no mercy rule. I don't feel football bad about that. is a timed game. Yep. Basketball is a timed game. Baseball is not a timed game. Yeah, that is the one sport there cannot be there, that there has to be a mercy rule. Like you don't want to be like, all right, boys. I think we uh, gave them our best shot. Yeah, we lost 65-0, to zero, and the game had to be called because there literally weren't lights on. Uh, but uh, we gave it our best shot. Um, but it was still only two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were a brutal two hours, but we did it. Oh, gosh. I think we got another update. Oh, nope. Still 13 Uh Speaking of two hours, uh, Joe, you hit me up with this. Uh, the Padres-Dodgers game on Sunday night garnered 2 million viewers. Yeah which is the highest non-Yankee Red Sox game in Sunday Night Baseball in almost the last six years. That, I have to say, clearly is a, a Shohei effect. The Dodgers are, like, I if Glasnow's on the mound, I, I watch the Dodgers. I love Tyler Glasnow, so I want to watch that. But also, the Dodgers are extremely interesting. Can this super team pull it together? And Dodgers Padres, dare I say... No offense out there to Giants fans and and my my old buddy Andy Dirt Johnson, but I sometimes feel like Dodgers Padres is a little more of a rivalry than Dodgers Giants these days. Well, I I would calm down on that. Nowadays, you're right. Uh, overall, the Dodgers Giants uh, there are, is still likely to be a stabbing in the stands at any moment. Which we are pro, I mean anti, sorry. Yes, no. I got that Freudian slip. No, we don't want that happening. Of course not. Uh, But yeah, I mean, over the last couple of years, with the Padres spending as they have and acquiring the talent that they have, that has definitely kind of surpassed it. And also, I think just the proximity Mm -hmm. of those two cities. I mean, what is it, 45 minutes? Something like that. Um, That Yeah, I think that over the last couple of years, because the Padres have been going for it, and the Dodgers have obviously reigned supreme in the NL West, that that is the marquee matchup in the NL West. Uh, right now, my Giants finishing second in the NL West prediction is not looking <laughs> too great. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it is more so a Dodgers effect. And the Padres, they've started the year decent enough. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I've I've heard some reports, some rumblings that ESPN might be looking to kind of ditch definitely ditch Wednesday night baseball and potentially ditch Sunday night baseball but if you can get 2 million viewers on a Sunday night for baseball that might be something worth it's always the last game of the day now for me as fantasy as a fantasy guy in baseball I look at that last game and I'm kind of like all right what's the matchup do I got guys playing you know if St. Louis is playing Chicago which actually would be a good matchup I should think of something worse If Pittsburgh is playing Miami and they're the Sunday night game, I might look at it and say, you know, well, I got Luis Arise. I got 
Uh, what, what's the, what's the outfielder in the Pirates? Uh, Jack uh, Swa 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 swing and a miss lately on my fantasy team. Uh, I might tune into that game. Is this something that could continue to roll and maybe Sunday night baseball could be something? It's never going to be football. I'm not saying that, but is it something, do we just put the Dodgers on every Sunday or is it something that we could build to make Sunday night baseball better? Well, I think it's obviously teams sell Sunday night baseball, but really good Put the Cubs on it. Put the Cubs on it. But yeah, I mean, like the Cubs right now, I don't know if they're going to put up numbers like that, but a Cubs-Cardinals game, it could get up there because the Cubs are one of the most popular fan uh, franchises and uh, biggest fan bases in MLB. And, and got the a, Cubs remind me kind of like the Steelers where there's Cubs fans everywhere. They got a good team. Yeah, we saw that in Seattle recently. Uh, and the St. Louis Cardinals... Like, that's one of the most storied franchises, biggest fan bases in the league as well. Arguably the number two franchise of all time. Eh, well, They got uh, the second most titles. Well, yeah, but uh, as far as if you were to look at the casual fan and, like, make a top three, I don't know if Cardinals are making that list agreed, the majority agreed, of the time. Agreed, agreed, you know? agreed. So I, I think, like, when you throw out, yeah, a Pirates-Marlins matchup, that's not getting any juices going for the casual fan. Yeah, I don't know if you guys saw the uh, the news about the the morning stars sell. Basically, is what yeah. I feel like stars yeah. and brands and teams are what is going to get you that two million number. You guys, remember the Peacock Sunday morning games last year? Um, there's a new agreement with some broadcaster here soon to do these Sunday morning games. I champion baseball has the opportunity to turn, especially in the football off season Sundays, into baseball day. Why not open it up with a really good game, close it out with these like blue blood teams that you guys are talking about? You got to get the ones that you want to watch. It, the Lakers are going to be on every <clears throat> Sunday on ABC because that's probably going to draw the most eyes. So if you're wanting to do that, that's what you're going to have to do. But go start of the day, big draw. End of the day, big draw. The only thing I would argue, and this is a, <clears throat> this is a, a, uh, what's the best word for this? This is a company thing. It, Peacock is the Sunday morning baseball, right? Well, they they had it for a year, but there is a negotiation. They are announcing soon, MLB is, who the next deal will oh, be Oh, okay. With. So let's say it's Peacock. Let me tell you. I have Peacock. If the Sunday morning game is at 10 o'clock, there's a 9.30 EPL game. Oh, God. I'm just telling you, like, those of us that are Peacock subscribers. Move to Europe, you commie. We we subscribe because we want to watch EPL. I don't know. I think it's a platform thing that maybe Peacock isn't the best answer. Maybe the answer is Amazon or Apple TV or ESPN or something like that to be the first one. I don't know if Peacock's the answer. Because those of us that have Peacock, a lot of us do because we watch EPL. Or old WWE reruns. That I do late at night by myself with a gallon of ice cream. Uh, I don't blame you. After my that. Tinder what date. Ki- what kind of ice cream? Well, you know, sometimes I'm a mint chocolate chip guy, but usually I'm a chocolate peanut butter guy. That's that's a bold move. How, how are your feelings on Rocky Road? Great. I love Rocky Road. They got marshmallows, right? Yes. Yeah, more Rocky so, Road's marshmallows, great. Marshmallows, almonds. Yeah, Rocky Road's great. Chocolate. Mm. Tasty. Where? Damn it! I don't have the right drop up. And that's all. Thank you. There it is. Well, I got mine in front of me, but you're always worried Isn't that I'm just too happy go lucky on the uh, drops. You can be a little trigger happy, but yeah. uh, <laughs> is that not a great Swigard <laughs> drop that I did not know existed? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where did you get that, dude? I was looking for the uh, the newest U, uh, pilot drops. Hold on, everybody. And I just type in Swag's name, and I find this gem. Yes. You can put it on the board. I'll tell you during the break how Swigard big time me. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Could not believe it. All right, when we come back, can you believe there's a worse team in the American League West than the Seattle Mariners? And what if I told you it's not the Oakland A's? We'll do that next. Hot Corner, today in the fan. Sometimes in life, you really take it on the face, and it just comes at you day after day after day. 
It's the Fan On Demand. They're kind of fun to play with, aren't they? Now, fan podcasts are better than ever with whole show podcasts. I, I appreciate you because we needed a hamster to pedal this wheel around. <laughs> and you can still get newsmaker interviews in any hour from your favorite fan shows. Yes. <laughs> All right. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Listen to the Fan On Demand on your phone, smart speaker, or 1080 The Fan. How long do you leave it up there? Dot com. Held over due to popular demand Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This is a great opportunity to save thousands on hundreds of in-stock spas. Portland Expo Center. Huge factory incentives and factory rebates on the spas you've always wanted. Don't miss this opportunity. Free professional delivery. Take possession tomorrow, next week, next month, or next season. The Hot Tub and Swim Spa Sale. Portland Expo Center. Shop over a dozen models of swim spas. From 11 feet to over 19 feet. Swim spas offer low-impact exercise, active family fun, unsurpassed relaxation, and installation in one day. The Hot Tub and Swim Spot.
In the second hour, we'll get to is the best player in baseball becoming the best player in baseball again. I'd like to bring this back once a week and just kind of check in and see if our boy is back. Uh, quick score update. Uh, <laughs> I believe 18-0 now. <laughs> score of uh, Joey's soccer game. Go Vipers! And, and spoiler alert on uh, one of our favorite players on this show. It is not Paul Goldschmidt. Because paging Paul, hey amigo, you had a great career. It might be time to let it go. Not doing so well? Uh, you should look up Paul Goldschmidt's stats. Oh, boy. They don't look pretty good. You know who is doing good recently? And he's like two years younger than me and looks ten years older than me. You know who's doing good recently? We're bald bros together. Who? Anthony Rendon. No. I can't believe it. it believe I refuse. It. I refuse. I, I got to find what the, the time frame is because he started off just so crappy. But uh, over the last however many games, the slash line, not too shabby. But uh, sitting in the- And he's not injured. So, I mean, like that, I mean, that That's alone huge. is a win That's huge. for Anthony Rendon and the Angels. Uh, sitting in the American League West, you have the Seattle Mariners at 7-10, and 10, currently tied 0-0 with the Reds. Actually leading now 1-0. Uh, Jonathan Classe uh, made his Major League debut yesterday. Picked RBI him up in w. fantasy. Nice. Dude, I think- Started him today. I, I think, like, I like. Good for you. I think that's going to be a good pick. He's going to be like that Kyle Seeger kid, you know, like w- when you don't really know who he is coming up, but once he's there in MLB, he's going to stay there. And Just then, like Jared Kelnick? Oh. And, then we no. pay, and then we pay him like $180 million, and he's kind of like, kind of okay. Exactly. Is um, Kelnick still uh, doing? Uh, oh, he's hitting four hundred. Yeah, yeah, he's hitting four hundred, but he has no home runs. Uh, the Mariners are seven and ten. The A's are also seven and ten. If you're a Mariner fan, you could probably scream to the heavens about that. And Paul but Blackburn wait. is one of the uh, one of two pitchers that has a zero ERA. Yeah, dude. I know. I'm like tempted to pick him up, but he also plays has played some bad teams. Uh, don't look now. Neither of those teams are the worst team in the American League West. That would be the Houston Astros at 6-12, and 12, who are currently, oh, this game's probably over. I haven't updated this uh, sheet. Who were losing in the top of the ninth to the Braves. It is now the bottom of the ninth. It is 6-0 Braves over Astros. Dear God. That game is on TBS right now. Uh, what in the world is going on with the Houston Astros? Because if you look at it, Jose Altuve is one of the best players plus WOPS guys in baseball right now. Kyle Tucker's kind of doing Kyle Tucker things. Jordan Alvarez is hitting baseballs like they slapped his mama. And, uh... But you look around and something's not quite clicking. Framber Valdez is on the IL, and we don't really know the extent of Framber Valdez's injury. I'm worried he's got Tommy John written all over that left elbow. But Alex Bregman looks really bad. And the kind of pieces that Houston's always had, the Maldonados of the world, the Reddicks of the world, the Yuri Gurriels of the world, like those kind of players, they don't really have those guys right now kind of supporting them. So my question to you, Joe, is, is this a real cause of concern or is this just April baseball? Uh I'd say it's uh, the la- uh, the former of the two. I- one of my biggest concerns going into the season was the back half of their rotation. Now, Ronel Blanco has been better than advertised. <laughs> he was great in spring training. And there's, but there's no way I can believe this is going to keep going. I don't know, man. He- he's he's damn good. He had the first no-hitter of the MLB season. He finally gave up his first run of the season. He has a uh, less than one ERA. It's 0.86. It's the rest of the pitching because Christian Javier is pitching as well, too. ERA for JP France, 8.22. Hunter Brown, 16.43. Spencer Arigetti, who? 11.57. He started two games for them. And then if you look at some of the guys that have uh, thrown some innings for them in the bullpen, I mean, you've Josh got... Josh Hader's got a 9.39 ERA. Brandon uh, Bielek, 6.1 ERA. Ryan Presley, a 9.53. And he was the guy. Like, I remember being thinking about Ryan Presley when they signed Josh Hader. It's like, wait a sec. Like, I'm a top closer in the game. What? Why, why am I getting bumped? So, right now... <laughs> Speaking of Hader, almost a 10 ERA. God. Yeah. So I don't know if they're going to be, I mean, it's so weird because we haven't seen them be this bad in a while. Like they don't, 
we've had them seen them with uh, slow starts. But I mean, not- Brian Abreu, who was clutch in the last couple postseasons, he right now is a six point seven five ERA in eight innings pitched. We yeah. haven't seen them with bad starts. We've seen them with slow starts, but we've said on this show for a few years now that they are death by a thousand cuts. They just wear you down over time, over one sixty two. But they are giving up a lot of runs. A lot. I want to say outside of the White Sox, they've given up the, mo- uh, the most runs in the American League. Jeez. And so it's Side like. note, the White Sox are really bad. <laughs> Dude. Really bad. I think two wins. Two in really uh, two and well, fourteen. They made it into fair or foul. They're so bad. Oh, nice. <laughs> I love it. Um, I can't wait for 830. So whether this pitching stays this bad the entire season, I – I, I don't know, but it is really, really, really bad. Well, right it's now. it's interesting, too, when you flip it over to the batting side of it. It's just so, sorry, one more thing. It's just so weird because you do have two starters who are dominant right now, but everybody else is just essing the bed. For Jose them. Altuve has a 403 average right now. Jeremy Pena, 343. Yeah. Jordan Alvarez, 299 with four dingers. Kyle Tucker's got four dingers, too. Yanir Diaz has three dingers as well. But then let's look at Jose Abreu is currently batting 0 8 2. His average started with a zero. Okay. Alex Bregman is batting at 259 with an on base percentage of 317. Jake Myers, who you were worried about to start the season 229. Uh, yeah. You know, to me, the, the, despair that, that you guys are describing on both the pitching and the hitting side for the Astros. It just sounds like the vibes in that organization, the vibes in the clubhouse aren't great. And I'm going to say that is because they're missing a huge piece from last year that you guys didn't name. And that is former manager, Dusty Baker. Yeah, They got a new guy in Joe Espada. I know nothing about him other than he's been what a coach for the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. I'm sure he's a great assistant, a great hitting coach, a great bench coach. That does not mean that you can lead guys through a nine inning game and make these decisions and keep things going for an entire season. There's from Dusty Baker to a rookie manager, there is a huge change there. Now, the one thing that is going to help them though is that, well, and we will, I say, they get the Angels and the A's a bunch. Uh, that's true. Yeah. They <laughs> and do the get, they do get to play them a lot. And I say this before we even see him, but you would think that them getting Justin Verlander is going to help. So reports are saying he's back real soon. But, dude, he's old. Like, he's what, 42? He's older than me. 41? 41, I believe. I think he turns 42 midseason. Like, father time always wins, man. And like Unless you're Roger Clemens, but we all know how that works. Or Jamie know. Moyer. And B12. B12 uh, shots. He's 41. He won't turn 42 until next February, so he'll stay 41 the whole season. But, again, dude, he's been playing a long time. You wonder when the fall off, fall off is going to happen, and you're, you're coming off of an injury. Like, if you're an Astros fan, one, screw you, and two... Fingers crossed that Verlander is help, uh, able to help this rotation a little bit. So we'll keep an eye on the Houston Astros and see if this is a real situation or not. Uh, if if bells are going to be ringing and maybe a spot is uh, uh, maybe a little bit on the hot seat. So we'll see. If bells are going to be ringing and cra- uh, garbage bags or uh, garbage uh, cans are going to start banging again. Yeah, you should probably start now before things get out of hand. All right, let's flip it over in the second half. Is this team legit? They got the second best record in the American League and their pitching seems to be out. Outstanding, despite losing a Cy Young winner to Tommy John. We'll get to that next, plus fair or foul, and a check-in on our favorite player in baseball. Loaded second hour, don't go anywhere. Hot corner, 10 of the fan. Hey, it's Sue.
download that podcast at tennyofthefan.com, the Odyssey app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Shout out to Joe Fisher, my wonderful, wonderful co-host, longtime producer, for putting together some new opens for the 2024 hey, season. Shout out to Mac and Chase Hutley and the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, also, did you have a good relationship with your dad? Me neither. <laughs> These are things we can talk about and more. Uh, great oh, news. Oh, yes, they're stickers. <laughs> great news <laughs> in my relationship is that I was watching It's Always Sunny at home last night. I was, I was getting dinner, and the girlfriend comes over after work. So I just left it on, let it uh, let it brew. And, you know, I stayed quiet, just let her consume some It's Always Sunny for a few episodes. And there was a lot of uh, head shaking, but there was laughs, and we continued to watch it. And I think we got about uh, four episodes, five episodes in, and uh, I think I got her. I think I <laughs> Hooked. got her. Hook, I, line, sinker. Yes. Yes, dude. It was, um, and also, I need to move on from Arrested Development. You know you have some shows, your, totally. your go-to, like I'm going to put this on in the background. Like, we I'm always watch The Office, but we probably haven't watched The Office two, three months. Like, it's on the shelf for now. Yeah, I, I have to shelve Arrested Development. Because... We're on Frasier right now. Oh, We're watching a lot of Frasier. Dude, my wife and I are so boring. Come dude. on. Just leave us alone. White people, dude. Uh, White people. Frasier is the, uh, with the British dude and his dad, and he's the radio show host, Kelsey right? Grammer, the cheer he's spinoff. Not a, he's American. Come on, man. <laughs> Doesn't he have a British accent in that show? No. He just talks like a high Daphne, pollutant. the caretaker. That's what it is. He just... He, I'm Kelsey Grammer. That's... Yeah. He just talks really, yeah, fancy in that show. And <laughs> he's way, way too rich in that show for being a radio show host. Right? <laughs> like, what? No. What the, is this? In the no. 90s? No. That, that was peak radio salary yeah. time. You do have a point there, yeah. Is a, uh, Maybe he was point. the coward, cowherd of Seattle psychiatrist talk, talk radio. In Seattle talk radio. Well, That's where that show's based. Is yeah, Seattle, it's based right? in yeah. Seattle. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's a famous female uh, psychologist, so maybe he was just like the dude version of that in, in sitcom. Dude, world. Dr. Phil know. on sitcom. Yeah. All right, we got a final score update. The Vipers, big win, uh, 24-0. Now, wh- what, did, what did I do wrong? Uh, y- you didn't stop the ball from going in the goal, <laughs> is what it sounds like the other team did wrong. Well, congratulations to Medium Joe and your ass beating that you guys accomplished today. So One well and done. O, baby. One and O. Well done. Uh, coming up here in about five minutes or so, ten minutes or so, we'll get into uh, a little update on is our favorite player in baseball becoming our favorite player in baseball. Plus, we'll have Farrah foul the bottom of the hour. But I want to get to this. We kind of talked about how Houston is a little bit of a surprisingly bad team right now. But let's flip that on its head. What's a team that's kind of surprisingly really good right now? My friends, I give you the Cleveland Guardians. Your Cleveland My Guardians. My Cleveland Guardians. <laughs> the second best record in the American League. Uh, the crazy, they're 12-5. and five. They're first in the American League Central. I heard a stat this morning. This is where it all goes down. Their starting pitching on the road has given up, like, four runs on the season so far. They're playing the Red Sox right now, and they are absolutely smoking them. Tanner Bybee, Logan Allen, these guys are actually doing what Cleveland kind of has been known for. You know, I was worried, thinking about Cleveland as a longtime admirer of that organization, slash hater of that organization. We were concerned about the managerial change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With Terry, with, with, with Tito gone and Steven Vogt coming in, like, okay, I know we love this former player coming in. Now, he was a catcher, so I do kind of like that yeah, aspect. I got to eat crow on him. But you see, some guys are good and some guys are not. Like, I hate Dave Roberts. I hate Aaron Boone. But Craig Council is good. Rocco Baldelli is good. And maybe Steven Vogt is good as well. Now, the first thing you think of, now, Shane Bieber, before he decided randomly, before telling anybody that he was going to have Tommy John, kind of like Spencer Strider, he had two games started, and both of them were quality starts. Now, the other guy's got to pick it up, but what I think is more fascinating about this Cleveland team is this team, the same players as last year, all of a sudden are hitting. Steven Kwan, 372. Jimenez, 303. Josh Naylor, 328. 
What is going on with that? And that's with Jose Ramirez kind of having a sluggish start to the season. Still 15 RBIs to start. Right? Like He's just not hit, he not hitting for average, but definitely um, getting clutch. Yeah. Who who getting those guys in the, from running who uh, is a sneaky position. top five finisher in MVPs every season for the last five years? It feels like with Jose Ramirez, has this team finally figured out these hitters can actually hit? It's the question I asked about the Astros, but we'll flip it, Joe. Is this sustainable for Cleveland? Not just in the Central, but in the American League, can they keep this ride going? Well, uh, the Central's always a crapshoot, it feels like. Now, the Royals are playing a little bit better this season. Um, we'll see if the Twins can uh, continue their success over the last couple of years that they've had. But but let's talk about the White Sox. The White Sox are maybe the worst team in baseball. You're going to get some wins. Yes. And also, as far as who they played, they played the White Sox. They played Oakland. They played a slow-starting Mariners team. So And Boston, who you know me, I, I, I love telling you that Boston is terrible. Well, they're not, not right now. So true, though, right now. I yeah. suppose wow. that's fair. Tyler O'Neill is great, and their starters have actually been pretty oh, good. Dude, yeah, did you see his nowhere. collision, by the way? Yeah. Uh, him and, I think it was Devers. Devers, yeah. yeah. Sheesh, dude. Well, your two best players running into each other. <laughs> not Bad good. idea. Yeah. Bad idea. Shouldn't do that. Um, ah! I'm concerned about whether that pitching is going to hold up, whether you keep McKenzie healthy the entire year. and uh, I mean, Bybee has been good. But losing <clears throat> an arm like Bieber for the entire tough. season is that's tough. a blow. Especially and I think I think the biggest I think the biggest struggle with Biebs too is I call him Biebs. We're like old homies. Well now you got by Biebs. Yeah, I got by Biebs and Biebs. The problem with Biebs is don't, he, don't call him that. He's in a walk year. And uh, Joe, I told you a thousand times on this show even that Shane Bieber was going to have a really great season this year. Well, hey, and Cleveland was going to do what they always do. He's going to finish the season with a zero ERA. <laughs> Knowing that he was going to walk, and I actually really loved your Orioles at the deadline going to get Biebs to put him next to Corbin Burns and really make a push. With Biebs out, yeah, that's tough, and they're not going to get anything for him, which makes it even more difficult. But Logan Allen has shown bright spots over the years. And I, I know this because even though I'm a quote-unquote Mariner fan, yeah, I still kind of watch Cleveland. And uh, Tanner Bybee is 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 the next Shane Bieber, who was the next Corey Kluber, who was the next CeCe Sabathia, who was the next Cliff Lee, and et cetera, et cetera. I think if this pitching can keep it going, Carrasco, Cookie Carrasco threw a good game the other day. With how bad the Central could be, Minnesota off to a slow start, and the White Sox being as bad as they are, Cleveland could be a dangerous team come down the stretch. I think Cleveland has the chance. They have like the opposite problem of the Mariners right now. If their offense continues to play like they're playing, which obviously is way above their station last year, and they were still almost a playoff team in that weak division, that... They basically can cover up any semblance of bad pitching or the injury to their ace. I, I think if they keep hitting, they're, the sky's the limit for them. And they actually, come playoff time, we saw how many, you know, quote-unquote bad teams knocked the Dodgers off or whatever yeah. last year. So, yeah, they, they can do it this year. Yeah, they look at the Diamondbacks against the Dodgers. Just embarrassed them. Well, Absolutely. The, uh, the big thing for this team, though, right now is their bullpen. Like, I'm going to read you some ERAs from their some of their reliever uh, pitchers here. Cade Smith over over nine and two thirds, one point eight six. Beautiful. Tim Heron over eight and two thirds, one point oh four. Hunter Gaddis eight and two thirds, zero. Uh, Tyler Beatty, you got to pick it up, Beatty six point four eight, not good. But Scott Barlow's got a four point three two, and then Nick Sandin with eight innings in the third, two point one six. Class has got four saves and he's got a one one three ERA. Eli Morgan eight point one or eight and a third inning, two point one six ERA. Uh, Xavier Curry, who's pitched five innings, zero. You got a couple other guys that have pitched uh, have zero ERA. So this entire Top to bottom, this pitch. might be the best. Top to bottom, this might be the best staff in baseball. They're, right they're now. crushing it right now. I mean, they have, as far as bullpen rankings go, they have the fifth lowest ERA 
in the MLB at 3.14. The Royals right now with a 2.86. Well, Seth Lugo is on a ERA. Cy Young's winning streak right now. Four starts, four quality starts, and an ERA of like 118. Yeah. So, I mean, if, I mean, and that's the thing is like the starting pitching. The starting pitching can kind of be a little mad because that bullpen, it seems untouchable. Well, if you look at the ERAs of the starting pitching, Logan Allen, 5.06. Tanner Bybee, 4.82. Yeah. Tristan McKenzie, 6.23. Yeah, and, 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 and Tristan will throw tomorrow, but Logan and Tanner have, have thrown four starts. It's the bullpen that's bailing them out. And honestly, it's the hitting that's bailing them out. And that, let, let me tell you guys, 30-year Cleveland Indian fan, the hitting never bailed anybody out. And if it's going to bail him out this year, you might see me with a Guardians hat on in a couple weeks. Stop. You can't do that. Well, one, you can't do that just for the fact of... Well, one, I can do whatever I want, Joe. I'm a grown man. No, no, I'm a grown man. No. You trashed their logo and graphics the moment it came out. It is terrible. It looks like Minecraft. You can't wear any of that. But I can get the C. I'm not getting a Guardians thing. I'm going to buy you one. I'm going to get the C. (laughs) I'm going to buy you uh, some Guardians right, gear well, so seven that you have to wear it. A, shir- and a, a jersey. A jersey XL. All right, we come back. Let's check in on our favorite player in baseball. Is he returning to being the favorite player in baseball, best player in baseball? We'll get to that next, plus fair foul in a little bit. That's Joe Fisher. Jordan Schultz behind the glass. I'm Patrick Harris, standing the fan. What's your opinion?
way that travel soccer teams are an absolute <laughs> racket. Dude, that's why, like, everybody, every, so here, oh my here's God. what we're going to say. Let's, let's relate this to baseball real quick, and I do want to get into our boy Mike, but let me say this, like, in Major League Baseball, all the top guys, like Bryce Harper, all the top, excuse me, all the top white boys in baseball, Bryce Harper, those kids are travel ball players. And you can't be travel ball players unless you got the dough, unless you got that dollar. And he's his his parents had dollars so they could do that. So it's like, Joe, you want medium Joe to be a, be an MLS soccer player? Yeah, man, it costs money. It's like Taylor Swift. Like, Swifty ain't He's no... He's not revo- gonna be an MLS soccer Swifty player. Swifty ain't no revolution of music. Her old man cut a deal with a dude that pushed her through and got her a record deal, and now she's a billionaire. Like, dollars make dollars. Dude, I cannot believe how much they want for U-12 travel soccer team in the city of Newburgh. Lay it on us. In 2024, oh. I'm highly interested. I, I made Patrick guess. I want you to guess. How how much do you think a, a year-long season, basically, year-round? Travel. Travel, U-12, Newburgh, youth soccer. Seven grand. Seven grand. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. Let's back it up. Let's yeah. back it up. Let's maybe go like 10% of that. Oh really? Seven twenty-five. That's it. Yes. I mean, my God, it is just one. It's just Jeez, one city. <laughs> Seven grand. Jeez. I thought you said traveling. I thought this was like overnight. They're not stuff. traveling to Florida. Or AAU like baseball that. stuff. I mean, Come this on. is just a, like Delta Park or something like that. Oh, like, pay the seven hundred, you cheapo. Seven twenty-five. I'm saying so this... just over a hundred for him to just kick the living ass out of kids in Newburgh. All right. This I, is I... outside his school, though. It's big for him, dude. I don't want to sit. In sideways rain in November at Delta Park. Hey, but if you had, if you had a game on Delta Park and I didn't have to work, dude, I'd come down and root on Medium Joe. I love Medium Joe. Dude, I met Medium God. Joe when he was like four. I'm sorry, Mike Trout. I, I, was, I didn't want to uh, take. All over right, let's get away. AAU Joe ball. was so excited about Medium Joe's superstardom rise to soccer until <laughs> he realized like, that bro, he had to pay done. for it. He's like, <laughs> hey, hey, get a job. Bet you his dad paid the seven twenty five. Uh, Absolutely not. If you're new to the show or if you've been with the show for a long time, you know that the hot corner, even with our good friend Mike Lynch, that the GoFundMe page is still open. So if you want to help out Mike and his plight, uh, that means the world to me, to Joe, to Schultz, to everyone here at Tanny the Fan. You can help him out with that. You can check on our Twitter pages and all that stuff and find that. Forty six thousand two hundred and seventy eight dollars. Just, just insane. That's just insane. Almost forty seven thousand dollars. You guys are absolutely amazing. Hey, Kevin Calabro with a with a donation. Not a baby Kevin. Kevin Calabro should be donating like fifty K. Well, on, bro. He got he, he got a, a donation for Ian Eagle Come on, that wasn't that big, so I don't know about that. Where's Ian Eagle in this? Didn't didn't Ian Eagle go to Syracuse? Where's Tariko? Come on, Tariko went to Syracuse. So did the great Mike Lynch. Let's figure this out. Bob Costas, he went to Syracuse. I only know this because I worked with Mike Lynch. Didn't for Nick a decade. Wright go to Syracuse too? I don't know, but that guy sucks. He, you're not wrong. Uh, I hate anybody that had that was bald for a long time and then was like, "Oh, by the way, I have hair." Except for Shaka Smart, because I like Shaka. You need to have Dwight. But that's because I like cool, good-looking black dudes. You need to <laughs> hit up uh, Dwight Freeney. See what he's doing. Former Indianapolis Colt. Yeah, yeah, he went to Syracuse, dude. Dwight uh, Freeney. Uh, come on, guys. Mello, Carmelo Anthony, former uh, Syracuse Mello's Orangeman. Mello's not doing anything. He's, he's got he's plenty got, of money. Yeah, exactly. Mello doesn't know what's going on. All right, but uh, in honor of our great friend Mike Lynch, we'll talk real quick, and uh, we'll talk about probably the player we have mentioned more on this show over the last decade than any other player, and that would be the great Michael Trout from New Jersey. Excuse me, he um, looks really hot. He does look good. Like, that is a good-looking dude. And right now... Oh, I meant just, like, baseball. He's really hot. Oh. I mean, he's he's a good-looking guy, yeah. Yeah. Um, Guys, we're 16 games in. We got a 290 batting average, a 362 on base, which isn't amazing. 290, bum. Which isn't amazing. What what's the demarcation of a good batter for this show? Was it two three hundred? I thought it was two seventy. Nope, it's three hundred. So like only eight dudes a year now. Yep. Are you, are you okay. gaslighting me? I thought I, I am not. I thought two seventy. I might have to text Mike Lynch on this. Go text Mike. I'll do it. He'll tell you the answer that I've always said is three hundred. Fine. If you're two ninety nine, eh, pretty decent hitter. But if you want to be a good hitter, you got about 300. I feel like 300 was great hitter. Mike 270 Trout. was good hitter. Uh, Mike Trout is currently leading the league with seven home runs right now. 
So the question is, is Mike Trout back? Now, here's the biggest <laughs> problem. Yes. What if I told you, so I've got the stats up. Nobody can see. Mike Trout has seven home runs. How many RBIs do you think he has? Oh, boy. Oh, I'm going to go nine. Oh, I'll meet you guys in the middle. Ten. ten. <laughs> Boom. Mike Trout has seven home runs and ten RBIs. Well, i got to find this stat. What protection does he have? It's like Nolan Shanwell and Well, Zach Joe Nino. apparently told me that Anthony Rendon no. is back to World Series caliber. Oh, excuse me. Well, then Rendon is protecting him in the lineup, I guess. Well, now i got to find two stats because i, I got to find that Rendon slash line. Uh, at some point. And and Schultz, I'm going to put this on you right now. At some point, every single week, we need to have at some moment in the show, whether it's a segment that I choose or a fair or foul that you choose, that brings up where Mike Trout is in the world of baseball. Because right now, if your name is not Mookie Betts, the best player in baseball is Mike Trout. He's back. Or Michael Bush. That's where I'm willing to say on April 16th, 2024, that Mike Trout is back. We've got our guy. Because baseball, for so long, had Mike Trout. Now, he's not super marketable, and baseball's terrible with marketing him. But Mike Trout is a top five player I've ever seen in my life. And I, my life would be shattered if he was just gone. And now, I think it's safe to say he's back. As long as he stays healthy. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was going into this year. I believe one of the fair fouls was, was he going to play more games than Mitch Hanniger? Oh, yeah. Who so was, far, who was I think they're kind of neck and neck right now. They're both healthy, right? They're ball think, and yeah. ball right now. And, and, I'll, and I'll tell you what. The only constants in this world that I've known for baseball is that Mike Trout is awesome and the Angels suck. And we're still there. Yeah, it, right. is, it is unfortunate to see him in the Angels uniform because he's back, but. But they suck. Two, yeah, what are you going to do? Two Angel stats for you. So the Rendon one. Since getting booed at the Angels home opener on April 5th. For being a loser. An absolute D-bag loser. Anthony Rendon has been slashing 395, 442, 421. Jeez. Suck on that. After he compares his baseball millionaire job to a I'm making 40, 50 grand a year, really punching the clock and working my A off job. Can so Ron Washington punch. win manager of the year if the Angels only win 70 games? <laughs> yes, I hope so. I mean, with Artie Moreno as your owner, possibly. Hey, dude, that's an uphill battle. Since he began yeah. the year over 21, Anthony Rendon has gone 15 for 36 in his last nine games, raising wow. his average to 263. Wow. He can do it, Julio. Suck on can. that, Rendon. Yeah. All right, that's it. That's our check in on our boy, Mike Trout. What? Joe, this, what? Is, this is going back to the Trout hitting home runs with okay. nobody on base. <laughs> He's got seven home runs in 10. Mike RBs. Trout. Uh, and this was granted a week ago, it was like but five solo shots. <laughs> this was a week ago, but Mike Trout at this point last week had hit ten consecutive solo home runs dating back to last season. <laughs> so it's only of recent that he's got some RBIs. Two hundred and thirty-five of his three hundred seventy-three home runs were with the bases empty. That's sixty-three <laughs> percent of his home runs. The only player in MLB history to have at least. Uh, 373 home runs with 60% or more being solo shots is Alfonso Soriano. So That's insane. That guy was on steroids. That, and a very selective <laughs> stat right there. Sure, sure, like, sure. But That's it just, like Chicago on a Tuesday with the lights on at Wrigley. Right. Yeah, but it goes to show that, my God, Mike Trout. Jesus. I pray Mike for Mike Trout buddy. and Felix Hernandez should get their own wings in the Hall of Fame. Somebody help that man. <laughs> All right, we come back. It's everybody's favorite fair foul, but first, Schultz with sports. Now, now, from the Fan Sports Desk, a Sports Center update on 1080 The Fan. First on the fan, the play-in round happening as we speak in the NBA. The Sacramento Kings taking on the Golden State Warriors. Just getting going in the second half. Sacramento does lead 56-52. to 52. 11 minutes to go right now in the third quarter. And already finished up, the Lakers beat the Pelicans 110-106 to despite Zion Williamson going off for 40 points. LeBron leading the way for Los Angeles with 23. They move on to the official first round to face the Denver Nuggets. Elsewhere in the association, the Milwaukee Bucks planning to be without two-time MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo for at least the start of their playoff series 
because of a strained calf. The team is hopeful, though, that Giannis could be back by the end of the first round against the Pacers. And moving on to baseball, the Mariners trying for back-to-back -back wins against the Cincinnati Reds up at T-Mobile Park right now. Going fairly well as we speak. Bottom six, two outs. The Mariners do lead 3-1. to one. Mitch Garver and Mitch Hanniger, as well as Jonathan Classe, all with RBIs for Seattle. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. I'm Schulte at the 1080 The Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand on the Odyssey app, The Fan's Desktop Player, or tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. The Hot Corner, now in its new time, Tuesdays at 7 after Isaac and Sue on Portland Sports Leader, 1080 The Fan. Who are the good people that we represent? This is Mac Daniel Reynolds with the Reynolds Defense Firm, and we specialize in just one.
Senior Jordan Schultze. Can I give you guys one quick trivia question? Do you by chance know what this music is from? It sounds like Doom. Yeah, this is a video game. Do you know what video game? I'm going to go with Doom. It's not Doom. Wolfenstein. Not a bit, uh, not a uh, Mortal Kombat. No, no, no. This is Ken Griffey Jr.'s winning run. Wow. Uh, I don't this is Griffey's winning run. Uh, this was a SNES game released in 1996. Ooh. But uh, my God, it was just like, listen, this is just going to be a video game, a baseball video game. Don't, It doesn't have to be anything special. And they just dropped an absolute 90s techno bomb on our ass. I like what you did with the Open, too. You got to watch, uh, watch out for those baseball players. Blowing on balls, right? Oh, dude. It, it, getting on their hands and knees and blowing <laughs> balls. Blow balls. Not acceptable. Oh, God. Cannot do that. So funny. Yeah, yeah. The, the air, that, that was ruled a part of your body, by the way. So, no, that, that was a fair ball, and that was a, a base hit, unfortunately. Dude, watching that video clip and then the uh, Royals manager and, like, third base coach just Freaky. coming out, like, what the hell? So good. Because of a dude. That's a lot of time spending on your knees. It was too much. It was too much on his knees. All right, well, hopefully this uh, week's edition of Fair or Foul is not too much for you guys. Got some tasty ones. Uh, let's start off with... One of the worst teams in baseball <laughs> for number one, despite their lack of runs scored so far this season, the Seattle Mariners have still scored twice as many runs as the lowest scoring team, the Chicago White Sox. Is that fair or foul? Twice as many runs. Twice. So the, the Mariners, Chicago fair White or foul, Sox. they have scored twice as many runs as the lowest scoring team in baseball, the Chai Sox. First of all, I have to eat a little bit of crow because I did not think the White Sox would be the worst. Um... What is the uh, Colorado Rockies? Uh, this is not the Colorado Rockies. It is the Chicago White Sox. This team might be the worst team in baseball, and that is shocking because the amount of guys, the amount of moves they've made to get young players, and they're just trash. So I want to start real quick by saying congratulations, White Sox. You right now are easily the worst team in baseball. Number two, I will say foul. Even though the White Sox are bad, I don't think the Mariners are doubly better than the White Sox. I'm going to say this is fair because the White Sox scored like two, three runs to begin the season in their first like three games or something like that. Like I'm pretty sure they got shut out in their first game and then they only scored one run in their second game. Um, also, by the way, the Nationals being the worst team in the MLB, my uh, prediction on that, not looking so great. Not looking so great, Joe, yeah. but neither was mine, so we're in the same team. I'm going to say this is fair. The Mariners have twice as many runs scored as the Chicago White Sox. Well, like you guys, I got to eat uh, uh, crow about Steven Vogt. I was wrong, too, but this one is actually foul. It's Damn. close, but the Mariners have, uh, even if you count today, it was 58 at the beginning of the day, three runs so far, 61's total run tonight uh, versus the Reds. So 61 total compared to just 34 by the Chicago White oh my Sox. God. 34 over 16 games, so just over two runs a game. That is disgusting. Dude. Is Felix back? Is this Felix Appreciation Night every night at uh, T-Mobile Park? Well, Pedro the Griefel Mariners? was a Mariners coach at the time that Felix was in Seattle, so maybe he just took that vibe with him to Chicago. <laughs> at least Kirby threw well the other night, last Thank night. God. Well, he can't Gilbert just... throw well tonight? Is he still he did. throwing well? Okay. He did. He was uh, six or seven strikeouts last I saw. And Kirby can't just hammer the zone. He's got to try to throw some pitches out and expand it a little bit. Guys are picking up on Dude, it. this music makes me want to drop a tab and just zone out in a warehouse somewhere for Logan like five Gilbert, hours. Logan Gilbert, 6.2, one run, three hits, six Ks, and a walk. Give me Let's a pacifier. Go. Bam! All right, guys, speaking of great pitchers, that is the nom, subject. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, uh, speaking of great pitchers, that is the subject of our second fair question. Pedro Martinez. Question. Bob Gibson. I love Tommy Glavin's junk. Oh, I love One of the Tommy teams Glavin. that uh, Pedro played for, the Boston Red Sox, 9-8 and eight so far on the season. They, fair or foul, lead the league in ERA with 2.68. I'm going to jump on this real quick. Or do you want to go? Oh, I was going to say <clears throat> go for it. I, I'm going to jump on this I'm, real I'm quick. I'm not pissed uh, at all. You know I love trashing the Boston Red Sox. There's very few things in this world. Your Boston Red Sox. Outside, yeah, my Boston Red Sox. Outside of Ryan Cooley's Boston Red Sox. <laughs> Ryan Cooley, sales bros, 
Boston Red Sox. Outside of Dave Roberts and Aaron Boone, there's nothing in this world I love trashing up more than Ryan Cooley's Boston Red Sox. But I will say this, their starters have been good. Their starters have been really good, surprisingly. Now, they can't play a lick of defense, as seen today and yesterday and the day before that and the day before that. Tyler O'Neill and Rafael Devers run into each other, and they might both be dead, and those are your only two good players on I offense. I thought Devers was dead for uh, yeah. a moment. Yeah, it looked bad. It looked really bad. Uh, but their starters have been good. But you got Kenley Jansen, you know, bitching and whining about the balls, maybe because it's your washed. Uh, maybe you can get back to the Dodgers at the trade deadline. Who knows? Uh, but I will say fair. Yeah, I do think this staff is doing really great things right now. We'll see if it stays. But imagine if they had Jordan Montgomery. You know, imagine if they actually put some money into a free agent. I'll say fair. I'm going to say foul. Um, mostly because I kind of cheated earlier by looking up the bullpen ERA rankings earlier. And it did have the Royals at the top of the bullpen rankings, and I think their starting pitching has been just as good. So I'm going Royals. Dude, Seth Lugo has four quality starts with an ERA of under 1.2. What kind of pixie dust are they sprinkling in Kansas City? I don't know. Jeez. Uh, uh, I know Missouri has a lot of uh, meth, so maybe <laughs> uh, crystal meth dust. That's not know. the pixie dust I was referring to. Um, all right, this is actually fair. Uh, so Patrick nails it. Uh, they have the best ERA in all of baseball, starters and relievers, but it is, as you just pointed out, Joe, because of the great ERA by the Royals bullpen. The starters are carrying it. Brian Bellow, 3.92. Cutter Crawford coming out of nowhere, 0.42. Dude's been in the league like three years, and it's pitching like an ace. He One got of the cooler Whit names. Uh, I know, right? Whitlock, 1.26. Tanner Houck, 2.04. And then Nick Pavetta on the IL right now, but under a, under a run, 0.82. They're just giving up nothing. Well, unless they play the Baltimore Orioles in Fenway. Which they haven't done yet. Unless Colton Cow Colton Cowser. You say they haven't done yet? Yeah, you no, guys haven't played them yet. Oh, yeah. We, oh, okay. We just had a three, uh, just swept them at well, Fenway. That's my, why my Cleveland Guardians just put a put a beating down on Well, that's too. why Colton Cowser won AL Player of the Week, because that dude was doing everything for the Orioles. Homers, making catches up against the Green Monster. Moo! Moo! All right, final fair or foul number three. No cows in this one, just New York Yankees. Uh, they have started the season off very, very well. Unbelievable 12 and 6. <laughs> yeah, Patrick was talking about his A under total uh, bet for the Yankees season. I'm worried. Yeah. It's not looking great. What was that? Uh, 88 and a half? Then what did you, what did you say, Patrick? 92? 92 is oh, what I got it. Mm, that's close, buddy. Put 20 on it. Uh, that's, that's not bad. I like I'm it. I'm ruined. Oh, it's not ruined yet. But the Yankees are playing very well, uh, exceeding a lot of people's expectations, leading the AL least by a slight margin. But for now, right? Yeah. But the team is producing to their level of expectations, maybe above other people's watching them. So is it fair or foul? And this is kind of something that I stated last year leading into this year that the calls for Aaron Boone, I thought, were stupid. I didn't think that there was anybody better that you could go get to coach that Yankees team. So fair or foul, guys, this start proves all the calls for Aaron Boone's job were unhinged and reactionary. Uh, I guess I'll start this off. Uh, I'm going to say foul because there's still a lot of season left. And I have nothing to base this off of. Aaron Boone is a, one of the worst managers in Major League Baseball. <laughs> I just you wanted know. to mostly say foul because of this. And there is actually. no way, shape, or form that I'm giving Aaron Boone any credit whatsoever. Okay, so you got the most on-base machine in baseball, Juan Soto, and you traded some crappy-ass prospects to get him because your minor league system hasn't been S since 1992 that Brian Cashman didn't even create himself, and you haven't had a manager since Joe Torre that you ran out of town because he said he was too old. Meanwhile... I, I can't. I can't. This team sucks. Aaron Boone deserves all negative credit and no positive credit. I think he's doing great. I think he's doing a great job. He's telling Juan Soto, hey, you know that thing that you do all the time? Get you on base. You just, should do that. Just keep doing that. And that's a great manager to me. But I will say this. The Yankees are scary right now, and Judge isn't even hitting, and Cole hasn't thrown a pitch. Cole pay's looking good. If, they can, if, if Judge gets on track and does Judge things, and Cole can come back and pitch and not have Tommy John... Yankees will be scary. Not because of Boone, though. 
Well, again, they, they haven't played the Orioles yet. <sighs> All right, that is fair or foul. We do it every single we- Tuesday. Ooh, yikes, yikes. Dude, ee, ee, you know ee, ee. Can it, dump it, moving back to Wednesdays. We do every single Tuesday at the bottom of the 8 o'clock hour. Oh. We, we come back, we'll wrap this bad boy up. Hot corner today in the fan. The Caitlin Sensation. Thing is, uh, we're, we're, we're doing all right, Joe. We're doing all right on Tuesdays. Tuesdays, it, it creeps up on me when I was making those. Op- I think I said I was gonna have new opens for the show before the season started, and then the season started, and then we had last week's show and didn't have opens. And then tonight, I was like, damn it, no, 
I will have opens for us. Uh, we've got our resident Red By Sox golly. fan who is chiming in on the Vancouver Ford text line. Uh, smoked yesterday, extra innings today. Extra innings win today. Was it, was that about the, the Guardians? <laughs> or was that... Like they, because the Guardians won yesterday six nothing, and then won in extras today. Yeah, maybe they thought they were gonna win in extras. Um, oh, they, because yeah, that's right. Yeah. I was watching the Guardians. That's why I saw the O'Neill Devers collision. Is because we had it on the TV in the office yesterday. And you gotta love saw when Jose Ramirez hit a home run. You gotta love when somebody uh, backs up their team and says, "Hey, no errors the day before yesterday." Yeah. Uh-huh. We're doing all right. Hey, I didn't cheat on my wife today. We're not screwing up as much. Jeez. Yeah, he is. Uh... I did not mean to click that one. I was going to say, is he coming in? Okay, Down let's go. Down goes Anderson. Down goes Anderson. I meant to click that one. And then his text is followed up uh, by Tyler O'Neill's uh, lightning stats. Seven home runs, eight RBIs. Does that make Tyler O'Neill better than Mike Trout? Uh. Because, like, you are clearly the only guy on your team. Yes? Maybe? I don't know. That's bad. That That's T-Rex Pennebaker stats right there. I don't even know what that means, but I want to know. Oh, it's, um, you remember the movie Mr. 3000? Mr. 3000? Yeah, yeah with, with Bernie, uh, Bernie Mac, yeah. RIP. So the guy that was the star player on the team. They would never miscount hits, by the way. That's just stupid. That Sorry. is true. I Sorry. Mean, I mean, Schultz right. They would never miss How count. dare this movie not be accurate? I digress. Continue. Uh, T-Rex Pennebaker, he was a star player on the team, and he had like 41 home runs to like 60 RBIs or something like that <laughs> in that movie. I, I just remember that being a big contention point, and him getting all pissed off because he was freaking out. I am the team. And oh. Ber- and then Bernie Mac had to school the young, uh, the young star because that used to be me. I am 1080 the fan. And then he laid the bunt. He laid the sack bunt to give up the 3,000th hit. Uh, What do you think Mike Trout finishes the season with? Home runs wise? Yeah. So he's got seven dongs. He's got seven dongs. And we're not even through April. So May, What's June, 40 July, and 72 August, RBIs. September, five. What's seven times five? 35. I'm going with 45. He's got 45 home runs. I'm going with 45 home runs. How many RBIs does he have? I'm saying 40 and 72. 40 and 70. My God. That's I a lot that. of solo homers, I'm going to go baby. 45 home runs. You know what? I say he cracks 100. 45 and 100. I'll tell you what, Joe. I'll ride your 45 home run. I'll bet you this isn't even possible. I'll bet you Mike Trout has 45 home runs and 38 RBIs. <laughs> That's how bad the Angels are. I'm going to go with that. They subtract RBIs somehow. Yeah, like negative ribby. Like, dude, you're losing Never 12. Never before seen. You're losing, that'll be history. You're losing 12-0 right now, and you just hit a dinger in the sixth. Yeah, they're losing 12-0 in the sixth. You just hit a dinger. That's a minus two RBI to your stat total. No, he'll knock in Rendon a few times. Rendon's on a <laughs> on a heater right now, okay? <laughs> All right, that'll do it for us. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be back next week. Uh, we appreciate you, and we'll keep you updated on Mike Trout. We'll look into some other things. Is Tyler Glass now truly the Cy Young favorite in the National League? We'll see another start from him. And can the Mariners piece together this pitching staff with Kirby pitching better? Gilbert pitching better and Castillo pitching better. We'll keep you updated on that. Jordan Schultz on the ones and twos. Joe Fisher, I'm Patrick Harris. Go do something I would do. Sometimes in life, you really take it on the face, and it just comes at you day after day after day. Hey, it's Sook. Vulcan Design and Construction helped me turn my backyard into a true outdoor living space. Now the area I used a few times a year is my favorite place to hang out.